Oh, we'll get we'll get to all the things we're going to be doing tonight. So what we're going to be doing tonight, uh, I am boiling some water over here. Okay, we're going to put some lentils there to start boiling, because that might take a while um, to make our salad. So I'm going to start on the mixture here for our souffle that we're going to try and do on the microwave. This is brand new experience here, the microwave stuff. It should be fun. Haven't done it before. So we're going to explore a new a new way, a new recipe, call it whatever you want, together. We've done this in the past. I think it was fun trying new things together. Uh, right, the water is boiling, so I got some lentils here. Let's just take a, a little bit just to make a small salad. Just going to put them in there and let them boil. Uh, we'll take it one step further. We can add... Uh, some uh, bay leaves for the flavor. I do have some right here. So it's going to drop one, two bay leaves in there. Don't overdo it on the bay leaves. All right, so we've ha we have here two eggs, a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Or, yeah, no, I can't put too much. Mrs. doesn't like it. I will stick to a little bit of pepper. Uh, we're also going to add um, that one. Where is my What I'm looking for is my, I'm looking for my, ah, oh, there's my thyme. Oh, that's pepper. I've lost my thyme. Did I run out of thyme? Anyways, I'll have some thyme here. We'll go with a little bit of thyme. It looks like, no, okay. A little bit of thyme. If you have fresh thyme, of course, you're going to go with the fresh thyme. A hundred and twenty ml of cream. So I got my little measuring thingy here. Because this is about 200, so we want 120. On this one, I'm going to try and go really to um, spot on with the recipe because it might not work if we don't. All right, so we have those in there. I'm gonna whisk it a little bit, break the eggs. All right. Okay, I'll put this on the side for a second. And we are going to weigh out. Not a lot, just 30 grams of all-purpose flour. Thirty grams. Ten. 25, 32, that will do. <laughs> it's close enough. Uh, we're also going to need um, one teaspoon of baking powder. It's basically the powder that's going to make the whole thing rise up. So one teaspoon in there. Um, sorry to ask this, but you're a bit quiet today. It's a bit hard for me to... Is everything all right? Camera's working, microphone, just checking. I'll carry on with the show. I'm just mixing it in here. Okay, that's that. All right, thank you, thank you. Just, to just wanted to make sure that we're okay. So we got that. 
just to prepare something before we mix the flour and all that, we keep this here ready. I just want to have everything else ready as well for the uh, souffle. Like I said, we haven't done this before, so I'm just going to have here some... Uh, you can use ham on this one. I am going with some uh, some turkey. I just felt it would be better for the turkey for me. But you can go with ham. You can go with bacon. I'm going to go with like three slices. I get this and I do some like ham and cheese toasty. So that's that. Put this back in the fridge. Uh, usually I would recommend for you guys to go for a mixture of cheese. Uh, but I do have my frozen parmesan. So I'm just going to go with one cheese. I don't want to overdo it. But I think a parmesan plus uh, cheddar cheese, grated cheddar cheese, would be the best choice of two cheese, which you can easily find. And I think uh, for most of you, if you ever followed my recipes and all that, you most likely already have both cheddar and uh, parmesan cheese in your home as a, one of the permanent things you have there. So we're just going to cut these in little squares. Maybe three pieces was a little bit too much, but it doesn't matter. Just want to get these things ready. Okay, so we're going to put this on the side. Over there. And the next thing, where did I put it? Oh, over here. Out of curiosity. Yes, ham and cheese goes in the souffle, yes. Out of curiosity to the recipe, I want to actually weigh a slice of toast. I want to see how much is one slice. Hold on a second, because it wasn't teared off. There we go, zero. It's 25 grams, so I'm going to need two of these. Okay, I need five, 50 grams of, of that. It's crazy, isn't it? What, you never done souffle with ham, cheese, maybe some peppers and stuff like that? So we're going to do the same thing with the bread here, with the two slices of toast. We're going to cut this also in little squares. Uh, you know, pretty much like crouton size, I suppose. Or smaller. There we go. That's there. Oh, you never done souffle. Basically, it's cream, uh, ham, or or bacon, and all that. One, two, three cheeses. Uh, some people add pasta as well, but this is a little bit of a weird version. You don't add any flour and stuff. So you get a tray. You, you, you can put like... Um, uh, pasta like pens uh, Then you know you add the ham the bread the cheese and all that and the cream just to cover it Stick it in the oven for 30 40 minutes and you're done, but this one is going in the microwave. So it's gonna be like a I don't know if this, this is a good explanation think of it as a Self-rising muffin, but in the souffle version kind of thing <laughs> Anyways, so we've got the, the done and cheese is over there So we're gonna get the mixture we had here with the eggs the cream it is a baked egg-based dish originating in France in the early 18th century, combined with various other ingredients and can be served as a savory ma main dish or sweetened as a dessert. There we go. So, we're going to add our flour and baking powder. So, we're going to mix this. But at least, Larry, you can see that I am prepared now. I have my little uh, whiskey thingy. You know, not like last time we did the bechamel and was like, oh my god! So we, we have improved a lot. We even have a rolling pin now. And uh, hopefully with your support, your continued support that you're already showing, just by being here and all that, we'll be able to do more stuff. Now, the 30 grams of flour that we added, it, it didn't make it any, you know, uh, like a dough. So it's still very liquid. I'm just doing this so you guys can see this and mix it very well. Trying to get all the flour from the sides. So that's done. Next step, we're going to take... The, uh, well, if you have ham, this is turkey. We're going to put it in there and the bread, all of it into the bowl. Every single piece of this goes in there. Just mixing it up. Okay, let's add some uh, cheese as well. 
This is Parmesan cheese. As you do know, I keep this on my in my freezer, so I always have some. Um, I do love it, so I'm gonna go with three large, very generous uh, tablespoons. That will do. I'm just gonna mix this a little bit. So this is gonna make the mixture a little bit thicker, but everything is in there. Okay, let me put this back in the freezer for a second. Tonight's uh, cooking session is not going to be very long. Uh, it's the the only thing that kind of like takes a while is is the lentils. Other than that, which there's no way they're ready, but nope, still crunchy. Right, that's done. Step two, kind of thing. Um. I have some butter here, freshly opened butter. And what we're going to do, I do hate this part. I hate having oily things in my hands, on my hands and stuff, that's why. I have two cups here, a fixer one and a oregano one. And we're gonna grab some butter. I'm just gonna try and use the knife, just to butter up the sides of the cup. Uh, most likely, I will have to just use my fingers for this because the knife is just not gonna, not gonna do this properly. So we're buttering up the bottom, the sides of the cup. It's no butter, it's Lou Park. Yes, we agree. Oh, by the way, do you know how much it costs in the in the in the UK where you are, Lilaria, Lou Park? Just out of curiosity, because here is three forty-five. It's one of the most expensive butters. <laughs> in the supermarket but it's, it's it is good it is good so we're just buttering the cups around now the next step like i said we haven't done this before i'll keep repeating it if anybody's just joining us because they might thinking what the hell is this guy doing so i haven't done this before i know how to do a souffle on the oven but this is totally different so that's done just gonna clean my hands here a little bit um we're gonna we're going to get a little bit of uh general purpose flour that we use in our mixture and we're just gonna try and cover 275 for five 500 holy crap that's cheap so 275 will be about 320 340 here same price as this this one is 225 so you get it half the price than we do here you lucky people you like it, people. All right, just took all the greasy stuff off my hands. You know what? I should do what Dad says. Put a camera on the ceiling so you have a, the whole kitchen when I'm moving around. See if I can uh, get one of those when I have some money to spare. All right, we're done with the butter. We're not going to need this anymore. We're going to put this in the fridge. All right, we're going to get the flour back. Asda. Oh, I've missed Asda. Although, I have to admit, I was more of a Sainsbury's person, but... Alright, so, I got a little bit of flour. I'm going to try and use the knife for this. We just want to put a very little to butter and flour the cup. So, I'm just going to turn it around. Trying to do... I don't know if you can see this. Probably see it in a second. Just flour the bottom a little bit and the sides. So, our... Make sure it won't get stuck. You don't need a lot. You just need a little bit just to go around. You can even like shake it to go everywhere. It looks like it's working. You just put it on the top and you just shake it a little bit. It goes everywhere. I think that will do. Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, uh, Sainsbury's were a little bit closer. I got used to it. But the first two years in England, I was going to Asda. It was closer. I'm more of a convenience kind of person than that. Right, so don't leave this too much, too too long out because you're going to have issues with the bread getting too soggy. So we're going to take this mixture and hopefully carefully, we'll try and split this into the bowl, into the cups. Uh, I'm thinking about halfway through. Well, I'll, I'll get another cup. I thought it's going to be just for two, but let's grab one of my old mugs. Um, and let's put that in there as well. 
Most of it. It's about. I got some more ham here. So, uh, sorry, turkey. So I'm gonna put a little bit more on this, a little bit on that. Okay, that's that. Can have a bit of the kitchen towel. Just clean it up on the outside. You know me, I always make a bit of a spill there. That's what the recipe says. That's what the recipe says. To tell you the truth, uh, I don't really want to take it out myself. I want to eat it in the cup. Uh, according to the recipe, because I said I can do it in the oven. I have my own recipe, but this, uh, it's a modified version. So we're going to put this one at a time. So we'll see how well bad we do. In the microwave for two minutes, okay, at 800 watts. So I'm going to take that one. Sorry, I don't have a camera on the microwave. And... Uh, We'll try two and a half minutes, see how that the first one goes, and then we'll see if we're doing well or not. So in it goes smack in the middle. Uh okay, that one. Ow, shut up. All right, two and a half minutes. Let's pray it's going to go well. We'll see. It's set. I hope I set the microwave right because it doesn't... Uh, it has some weird programs and stuff. I don't know about the 800 watts. We'll see. Let me have another taste on the lentils for a soup. Uh, sorry, for a salad. Our soup. Okay. We have progress there. Clean up here a little bit. Um... In the meantime, I'm going to get another little bowl. Got some um, spring onion here. You know how much I love the the green stuff, so we're going to cut those. Get some of the other ingredients for the salad. Done. Just going to put them all in the bowl. I don't know if I should, but that's what we're going to do. Got a little bit of parsley. gonna leave a little bit for the end might need that on top you can say that every time you remind me i have no problem all scallions um i also have here some I always forget the name of these ones um what may i say it in english i don't remember these ones I always forget how they're called. Okay, 45 seconds for the first cup to come out. Um, it will come to me, the name of these. It will come to me. Oh, this one's bad. Ew. No, the radish. That's the one, radish. But this one is not good either. Damn it. What happened? They get the bad ones? That's very unlikely and uncommon with this company. Oh, that one looks good. Yep, that one's bad as well. What the? What the hell? Alright, this one's good, so we'll stick with that one. Alright, the first one is the microwave is beeping, so I'll cut this up. I'll go and get the first cup. Yes, we're going to bring the cherry tomatoes. We're going to use those as well. Okay, we do have a bit of a problem. All right, let me tell you what happened here. <clears throat> When I looked at it and I said to you, 45 seconds, the mixture was all the way up here, like a lot higher than um, than the cup. Uh, but now it is inside the cup. It kind of like instantly deflated. Uh, if I shake it, you can see it can move around. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. So I'll just grab a plate and I'm going to try and do this. 
See if he comes out on his own. And he does, but it's not 100% um, presentable, I suppose. But he did come out. Now this, I have a couple of ideas here. We'll, we will taste it, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to improvise a little bit here on the situation we have before we put the next one in. So I suppose we can take some Parmesan cheese and cover it. A little bit of extra stuff like that. Yeah. And we could get some scallions. Well, it's two, it was two minutes and something. I don't know. We left it very little time. I don't know. Do something like that. Um, we could have something else around it. That's why I'm making the salad, by the way. So we'll try and do something there. But let's try and cut this. Oh, it's fairly uh, firm. So let's have a little taste on that, shall we? So we could do something like that. Very good. Um, it does give you a little bit. How can I put this? A maybe because it's too hot at the moment, it feels like um, doughy. If if that if there's a word like that, but it has the bread, the flour. It's very tasty. So I'll put the other one in, but this time. Not two, two minutes and 30 seconds. I'll go for two minutes. And we'll see the next one. All right, I'll put that one for two minutes. But this one is really tasty. It's really nice. And uh, it, it's quite firm. So it will stand if you want to make some sort of a presentation. Hmm. I'm impressed. But it's also hot. The most important thing is that, as you have seen, it, it didn't take a long, a lot of time. So if you're in a hurry, you have some people coming over, a few eggs, a little bit of cream. You know, uh, it's about two tablespoons of flour and one baking powder in the oven, in the microwave, you're done. All right, we're going to leave the lentils. Keep cooking, we're going to add a little bit of water. Let me have a look on the other one and try and give you some description here. All right, uh, so now it's rising. There's one more minute left. I'll stick here and watch this and see if we can take it out to be a little bit bigger. I will be needing another plate. Now it's about, it's filling the cup now. It's about another 40 seconds left. Uh, the last one, I'm not going to cook it now. I'm going to put it last. Maybe after the stream, I want it to be warm for the missus, since we've seen that it works and it can be eaten. Okay. So now it's rising slightly above the cup. It is 24 minutes. Daft, I think you typed something. I'll check it in a second. What I might do on the last one, if I have a minute after the stream, because I can use the phone, I'll make this uh, two minute video for the cup and post it up for you to see how it rises up. Five seconds. Two. One. And beep. And yes, as soon as, soon as the microwave ends, it, it, it just falls down. Yeah, sure. I can, add it. I can tell you now if you want. So as you can see, it's the same thing. As soon as the microwave goes away, it just falls down. Honestly, I just watched it. <clears throat> Excuse me, it just like all the way up here and it goes beep or the microwave stops, it goes psh, deflates. But it is cooked. It is cooked. So I'm going to put that one there. We'll deal with this in a minute. Let it cool down a bit. We shall carry on with the rest of the ingredients of the salad until the length is ready. We'll plate that one. So I got some green peppers here. Just going to cut them up. I don't know, maybe I should have put all these on a plate so I can kind of like plate them out a little bit better, but you know me and plating. I I can cook, but when it comes to presentation, 
I'm not that good, but I can guarantee you the food is good taste wise. Uh, Lilaria, so the recipe for making it in the oven <clears throat> while we do this, I would recommend get a get a tray like this. You know, so you know the, the, those ones. I'm sure you know this, right? Uh, and then do some pasta. Preferably, my choice for souffle is this ones. You know this ones as well, right? Not a lot, just to cover the bottom. And then, you know, this makes it a little bit more filling with the pasta. You can skip them if you want, but I, you know, I prefer it. I like to eat well. And uh, then take a bowl, put some ham, some bacon, cream, all the cheese, a couple of slices of bread sliced up from toast, like I show you little squares. Make a nice little mixture, put that on top, cover it with cheese, put it in the oven for Everything's pretty much cooked there, except the, the, the milk, the, the heavy cream. And uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 150, 180, depends. I do prefer to cook my meals uh, in the oven slowly myself, like 150, 160. It takes like double the time, of course, but uh, I always found that cooking the food slowly makes it taste better instead of rushing it. And that's it. Now, as far as the ingredients go, if you don't want ham or bacon, you can go turkey. You can do chicken if you want. It doesn't matter. This type of food doesn't really have a restriction. You can pretty much put anything you want in there. So feel free to play with the flavors. You could do bacon and, and, and chicken like we did with Jason's recipe. Not necessarily you have to mix them up, but. I mean, I don't, you don't have to roll them up like we did on that recipe. So, we have the rest of the ingredients here for the salad. We got some green peppers, we got some radish, we got some cherry tomatoes, we got some spring onion or scallions, and we got a little bit of. Um, um, oh, I forgot the name of the other one. Um, it will come back to me. Yeah, the, the, the green stuff we did. I think it's basil, I think. Um, but I want this to be a little bit more, I want this to be a little bit more, um, fresh. So I want to give a little bit more freshness to it. So I will go for a little bit of cucumber. This has been on the fridge, so it's going to be cold. Parsley. Yes, parsley. Thank you. Sorry, not basil. Parsley. Thank you, Lilaria. So I keep this on the fridge. So they're really now it's hot down here in Greece, 35 degrees. So having a cucumber that's like 90% water on the in the fridge, um, <clears throat> it's really nice and, and refreshing. Nice small slices. Gonna put everything in the bowl there. Uh, you could also try different shapes if you want. I don't know. Let's do this one like that. A little bit more elongated. Feel free to always experiment when you have time. You know, make different shapes and sizes. They give a different texture when they have different sizes. It's not about just the looks. It's also like give you an example. This one that's round is fairly, you know, um, how can I put this? Um, hard and it gives you, you know, a crunchy, a more crunchy uh, texture in your mouth. However, this one. It has really no thickness, so this will melt. It will feel like something melting in your mouth. So you have two different textures from the cut. So play with it, try it. You can always impress somebody just simply by different, doing different cuts. Same thing, like I do that a lot with carrots. You know, either do them round or semicircles or diagonal. It's different flavors that look different on the plate. They give you different, not flavors, sorry, different textures and different looks. But the important thing is, people say, oh, this looks nice. Let me try this. And it's, so it's just a carrot on different cut. So we got all that. Um, the lentils are almost ready. So I, I'm just trying to think how I'm going to plate this. I really don't know how to plate food. But I think some of you have tried some of my recipes, like Heki. I did some of the roast that we've done for Christmas and stuff. And uh, I believe he was happy. We also had some people that did the uh, red sauce peas. 
So I'm getting my calendar out just to strain. Calendar, strainer. I don't know. You have a lot of names in English for that one. All right. Now, these ones, the lentils that I have here, they are a little bit, not crunchy, but al dente if you like. I like them. If you don't, leave them to cook a little bit more. It's really not an issue. It's up to you. But for the salad, and any salad, personally, I don't want anything that's really mushy. You don't, I don't want mushy stuff. Because don't forget, a lot of things, they will stay as a salad. Um, a long time, you know, with the olive oil and all this. I'm probably going to become even more mushier if you just do that. What I'm doing right now is I have them on the, uh, on the calendar. And I'm just running cold water because this is salad. I don't want a warm salad. I want a cold salad. So I'm trying to cool them down. Doesn't take long because they don't really keep a lot of um, water in them, like pasta, whatever. They really cool down quickly. Okay, so we have that. Let's see if we can actually do something nice today for a change. All right, so we have all the other veggies here. Need a spoon. spoon. So lentils, just gonna put them in there. Uh, you can also, you know, if you're gonna plate this, apparently you can take the lentils and do any shape you want and then add one by one all the other vegetables, but I want to mix them up very well. So, um, I've, I've always been a believer that you need to mix your food to get all the flavors together, you know? Not just put them one next to each other or anything like that. This allows for, in my opinion anyways, you know, all the liquids from the tomato and this and that to actually uh, mix, you know? And if you put one on top of the other, you get a bite from the middle, it will have the flavors, but the one on the bottom maybe hasn't dripped all the way down when you taste it, and you're going to lose some of that flavor. So I'd rather do this. And no, and remind you, because we did some uh we did do some uh tuna sandwiches with mayo, tuna mayo sandwiches. The trick is to mix the tuna and the mayo in advance, not just put them together in the in the sandwich. So salt. As you do know, I always like in any salad that I do, always add a, just a splash of pepper. Don't ask me why, but it's my thing. You know, we all have our little, give it a good mix on that. Of course, olive oil. Uh, for you guys, I would say about maybe three, three tablespoons would be enough. But here in Greece, we are used to a little bit more. I also know olive oil can be a little bit expensive in some countries, so three tablespoons for a pot like this is just fine. Okay. We're also going to add, if you have them, this is uh, totally ow, optional, if I actually manage to open this. Ah, there we go. There we go. These are olives. Uh, because I couldn't be asked today to play with pits, I bought some which have the pits removed. So just a little bit for the flavor in there. Olives are always good. I'm gonna do one more mix. I'm gonna mix it one more time before we plate this out. All right. Ah, basically the one thing you can really smell, because I put a little bit more, is the olive oil. Looks epic. Let's see if we can do an epic plating without um, screwing it up too much. All right, got a plate. I got my little trusted circle here. So I, d I don't know what I'm trying to do here. So I'm just going to try and put the salad with the lentils here on this. A little bit of everything in there. It's plenty of lentils. Trying to be picky here. All right, there we go. Should do it for the salad. Just gonna use this to press it, just to, to just a little bit. I don't want to squeeze the cucumbers and the tomatoes. Just want to make sure that uh, I will hold this to lift this, and hopefully the shape will stay. It might fall off a little bit. I don't know. Just a bit. Just a bit. So let's try and make this a little bit nicer. 
So I have here some balsamic cream, which we're just going to... I want to cover the top, really, just to make it a little bit dark on the top. So when you mix it, it will be okay. Um, let's put this uh, oops, here for a second. See, the problem here is my cucumber. I'll show you now. We can do that as well. So, see, if I didn't have these long cucumbers, then maybe it would look a little bit better. But I'm not going to move it to break it. So what I want to do is just get a little bit of the uh, parsley, just a little bit. So we add a little bit of color on the dark on the top there. Maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of the pepper. See if I can do a little um, shape. Just something to give it a little bit of color. Oh, I know what we can do. That would be a bit easier if we take one cherry tomato and we'll just place it like that. And then we'll put the pepper like that on top of it, I suppose. In a in a way, this this cucumber is pissing me off though. If I can take it out, there we go. All right, um, let's try and flip this. This has actually gone down quite a bit. Yeah, maybe I should have taken it out earlier. Maybe shake it a little bit. See if we can nudge it. Ah, it came out, it came out. We're good, we're good. Um, okay, let's put this on there. You know what I'm going to try and do, Lilari? Because you said in the middle, I'm going to try and cut this, because it's fairly steady. The souffle is really hot, though. And now we have two pieces. I'm going to drop the one like that. I'm going to try and lean that one on top of that. Or, I don't know, put them like this, trying to make a little shape thingy there. And... Um... We're going to take our parmesan that we have here. Trying to think of a. I was trying to do the little. Uh, I was trying to do the little, you know, curvy thing you do with steaks, the fillets, that kind of thing. That's what I'm trying. Maybe on this side, bend this a little bit. There we go, like that. Something. Ah, it's not happening, but you get the idea. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put loads of parmesan cheese, make this like a little snowy bunker. I think that would be the right expression there okay i think that will just put a little bit more who doesn't like parmesan cheese jesus yes there we go and 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 and, and i need a little bit of green up there so i'm just going to go for a little bit of scallions uh, i'm just doing this for the color but the scallions are already in the salad so we're good you know, they're already on the salad, so if you just put them like that there. I I'm really not good at plating, so you, you know where I'm coming from. Now, I know, okay, like I said, we're experimenting here with just playing. When it comes to the plating, the taste, I can guarantee the plating not so much. But, um, what else we can do is we could possibly, possibly, uh, take this and do a line, like in the middle, just to give it that little, uh, I don't know, like border, give it a little bit of color. You could, uh, we could also be a little bit more playful. I know Lilara likes to play. And uh, let's play it out. Now that we've done that. Let's put this on the side. Get my knife. Gonna go for some more cherry tomatoes. Maybe we'll look bad, I don't know. But I'm just like improvising right now. I'm really bad at plating stuff. Just want to make sure it has a little bit of color, the stumets of other things around. So let's try just around, give it a little bit of color. Right, everything that goes on the plate should be edible, so everything is edible here. Spread them out a little bit, so use all of them. And I don't know, let's call it a day. <laughs> 